Hey, what's up guys, it's Ben Bonk, and recently I entered the Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam. So unlike other game jams, I don't think this game jam went as well as I would have liked, but I think I learned a lot in the process, so let's get into the video. So my Game Maker's Toolkit Jam experience started while I was eagerly waiting for the jam theme to be announced on Mark Brown's YouTube channel. And the theme that was announced was Out of Control. And I immediately thought of a bunch of ideas for a game that I could make. I could make a game that was out of controls, you could be out of the control button, you could have RNG that was insanely out of control, you could have the enemy or player just be out of your control, you could also have gravity and other effects just be out of control. I thought this theme was pretty interesting, and my point was I think there's a lot of things that you could make out of control, like there were so many ideas that I had for this game. So the first thing I did was me and my game jam partner slash composer GizmoDude started writing down a bunch of ideas for games that we could make inside of a Google Doc. Eventually, after a lot of brainstorming, GizmoDude had this idea for a puzzle game where you play as kind of this control box and your goal was to move around crates and get them to fall on buttons. So pretty much while crates are inside your control box, they would not be affected by gravity and you can kind of slide them around on the tile set to position them exactly where you want. And once they leave the control box, they will fall to the ground and so you have to strategically kind of move them around to get them to fall on the buttons. I thought this was a pretty cool idea and you can do a lot of things with it. So I hopped into Unity and I started working on the grid movement for my player. And after a bit of work, here's what I got. Pretty much you can see that my player can move around on a grid and his player kind of control box would snap to the grid and you can move around and I think it looked pretty smooth and nice. With that in place, I kind of made this wait move coroutine, and so my player could not spam the move button, and so you could only move between like every 0.1 or 0.2 seconds. Then I started working on the physics for my crates and getting them all set up and making sure that they would have a script where whenever they were in the player control box, they would not fall down. But when they leave the box, their gravity will return to normal. So here's what this kind of looked like. As you can see, I can pick up the crate. This art is just really temporary, but I can move it around. And when I kind of go against a wall, it'll stay there. But my kind of control box can go through walls. And you know, this was just a few hours into the game jam, so I was already feeling pretty good. But unfortunately, this feeling would not last for long because Gizman dude messaged me asking if it worked on multiple crates because we were going to have like a 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three grid. And as you can see, this totally screwed up my whole entire physics system. There were just so many glitches, so many I couldn't even, you know, count. And it was just a complete mess with a 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three grid. And this was going to be kind of a core mechanic of having more than just a 1x1 one one grid. So I really needed to fix this. And I think this is a good time to talk about my first game jam tip. And that would be, don't use physics if you don't have to. Physics throughout my whole entire project for this whole entire game jam, pretty much the downfall for me and kind of caused every single problem. So just keep this in mind, if you're using a game jam, physics can be pretty unpredictable. So don't try to rely on them if you don't have to. So I proceeded to spend the next three hours of my life trying to fix this kind of physics issue where my boxes would kind of smush together and they just act really weird overall. And looking back at the project, I really, really wish I used transforms to move my crates and have them fall because physics just were kind of the whole entire issue of this whole entire project and caused pretty much every single glitch. So I really wish I did that instead of using rigid bodies, but eventually I did kind of get something working and I just made some really hacky fix where pretty much whenever the boxes are inside of the kind of control zone, I will have less mass when they're in the inside. And so the box on the outside will have more mass. It was a really, really, you know, hacky way of going about it, but it kind of worked. And I just left it out there for now. But this fix still was obviously not perfect and there's still a ton of glitches. So since I was stressed out with all the physics issues and just stuff not really going my way, I decided to take a break and kind of work on the button system. So pretty much what it was is whenever a crate kind of entered the trigger area for the button, it would simply just increment a variable inside of my player script. And if I pressed enough buttons, it would kind of just move on to the next level. Super simple, but I got that working. And with that said, that was the end of the first day. So the next day, I immediately started working on a tile set for the game because I totally should have been working on tile set instead of core essential gameplay mechanics. You can tell that's sarcasm and I really shouldn't have been doing this, but I don't know. I guess I just wanted the game to look kind of good and I don't really have my priorities completely straight. But as you can see, I made this kind of tile set and I also made a bunch of different art pieces for the game like the crate and the buttons and just the kind of control box because I like to keep games with game jams pretty like limited in art, a game that I won't need to make a million different sprites for. 
after I imported those into Unity, here's what they looked like. I'm pretty happy with the art for this game. I think it looks pretty nice and it's kind of like a construction site almost. But yeah, there's still physics issues for sure, but I still thought the art looked really, really nice. Then I made some polish for the button, and so whenever you have the crate fall on the button, it'll put its animation, some particles will kind of spew out, and you also can't pick up the crate that's fallen on the button. Then I spent way too much time trying to figure out how to make a no-go zone, and pretty much what this is is just a little yellow box, and my control box cannot go through the yellow box. But I can pick up a crate, I can drop it through the yellow box, and it'll actually fall through the yellow box. So it's kind of like you have to drop crates in the buttons that'll have no-go zones on top of them, and so you kind of have to like think about, you know, where you place your crates and have them fall down. Then I started working on a bunch of different level designs. I kind of tried to follow core game design principles and just start off with an easy one by one grid just at the, at the beginning with maybe just one crate and one button. But then as time progresses, the grid will get bigger and also you have more buttons and more mechanics. And I also wasn't going to introduce the no-go zone right away just to introduce the mechanics to the player first. And I think this is a good intersection for my next few game gem tips. And the first one is to get a solid working mechanic in place before you start on anything else. The reason I wasn't working on getting the glitches out of the crate pickup mechanic was mainly because I was really stressed out and tired of working on it. But I really should have got working on it instead of getting distracted and hoping I could hide all the glitches with smart level design. And this also really goes with game dev in general and it's something I can still struggle with. And this tip leads into my next tip, which is if something isn't working, just scrap it. I know Nick from Vimlark really emphasizes this point, and instead of trying to patch up my clunky pickup system, I really wish I just scrapped everything and started from scratch with a different perspective on the problem. Getting back on track, I started working on a bunch more kind of tutorial basic levels. These levels weren't really have meant to have a challenge to them, but just to introduce the mechanics and get the player familiar with the controls and the game. And by then, after a little bit, I made three levels that were pretty basic, just introducing the mechanics very, very slowly. The thing is, these levels took quite a while to make, and I was only three levels in, but I really didn't really have any gameplay yet. And it was just three super easy levels. As night was really approaching, I was starting to get really tired of level design. So I started working on kind of the backstory for my player. And I had this idea where I had a guy named Patrick. Originally, it was going to be something like Phil or... But I decided on Patrick in the end, and pretty much he'd be at his job where he'd have to move crates with this new technology. And the thing is, he didn't really like his job before, but now that he had this kind of crate technology, it'd be pretty cool. And I like that kind of idea where you just have to package things, like with you have to package crates. Then I ended off the day by making a very, very simple start screen and scene transitions. I started the next day with making a bunch of small tweaks to the game. I made a credit scene, I made a wind screen, I made another sprite that changes whenever a crate lands on a button, to kind of showing that it gets packed. And I also made this cutscene, which you'll see uh, if you want to play the game, I'll can, you can see this cutscene there. It kind of goes around the backstory about how Patrick does not want to work, and his boss has this new technology for him, and yeah. I also made this kind of really simple and quick tutorial that kind of teaches the player how to play and all that kind of just small stuff that makes a game a game. Then I started working on some more level design and oh boy did this take quite a while. I really did not predict that level design making so many levels would take this long and it practically felt like half my jam was just dedicated to level design as I didn't really mention everything I was doing in the days before but level design is something that especially in puzzle games uh, and what I like to think is making easy levels is easy but making hard levels is hard and using these kind of mechanics to just with a limited amount of mechanics making difficult and you know puzzles that actually make you think and you know just hard in general can be really hard to make for the player. So that is definitely my next game gem tip is that level design may take longer than you think. It depends on what your kind of game you're making, but just keep in mind for a game jam, level design can take quite a while, especially if you need to make really hard levels. I was originally hoping to have 10 levels in the game and have eventually get up the levels to be in difficulty with a 3x3 grid, but unfortunately I just ran out of time and I could only make 7 levels, with 3 of them pretty much being freebie levels, so really only 4 levels. So I really wish I had more time to go with like a more 3x3 grid, getting even harder than it already is. Fortunately I just ran out of time because I really needed to fix some glitches. And as the jam was coming to an end, I had so many glitches to fix, um, a lot of them being the physics based, I tried to patch up a bunch of small glitches. I sent the game over to Gizmodude for him to test, and he got a lot of glitches that I really needed to fix, 
and just boundary issues, just so many physics issues. I messed around in the Unity physics kind of uh, settings menu for hours trying to fix these physics issues, but I just really couldn't put tape on a hole that was leaking out water. Then the final things that I really did for the game was I added a bunch of sound effects that Gizmo Dude found for me, and I also added in the soundtrack for the game that Gizmo Dude had been working on. I'll give you a quick listen of that now. I think they sounded pretty good. I was really happy with the music that Gizmo Dude made, so shout out to him. His links will be in the description if you don't want to check out his music. And finally, I also added some post processing effects, and there was that, and the game was pretty much done. Then at about 1.30, an hour and a half before the deadline, I uploaded the game, and I playtested it, and then I found one glitch. I playtested it again, I found another glitch. I tried to patch those up, you know, just very quickly. I did that for about a whole entire another hour, I would say. And so there's a bunch of glitches in the game, but I think I try to get as many as I can. It's just kind of the physics just kind of screwed things up, but I spent on that for that was pretty much what happened for the last hour. And then finally, when I thought I got as many as I could, I just ended up uploading the final build and submitted it to the game jam. Well guys, that was my submission for the Game Makers Toolkit Jam 2020. And I know I might have sounded kind of negative in this video and that I was really sad and or just made a lot of mistakes, but overall the game is still a game. Nonetheless, I think it's still pretty good and a lot of the feedback on the Jam comments were actually pretty positive. A lot of the people point out the bugs, rightfully so, but still I got a lot of positive feedback in general. So the game will be the first link in the description, so if you want to play or rate the game, feel free to do so. And also, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, maybe subscribe. Thank you for all the support recently, guys, um, on all my videos. And that's all I really have to say. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.